Welcome to the end of the carrot of Sonic 06. The Sonic episode has been cleared for 30 points. Yay! Yay! With three wings. Only took me seven and a half goddamn minutes. Just made yes, we just made it through this terrible, terrible playthrough. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think the first thing I did, I think the first thing I did after, um, actually, I can't even remember how I made this happen. I, I ended the fight, and then there was a pause. Oh, that's right, I recorded this all as one chunk, and then I just split it up later. Okay. So I'm, one, so I'm wondering how I broke this up when there was no pause in between the boss fight and the, and the congratulations menu. Uh, at least, this is a bit more catastrophic than that saying would imply. Who said that? Mm. If you have time to worry, then run? Yeah. Sonic said it earlier in the playthrough. Oh. So, that that was a Chekhov's gun, as though to demonstrate that some thought had been put into the storytelling. They are dead! Oh no, you had four rings at the end of the boss fight. Sonic is totally okay. At least should be dead. It's like, take me now! <laughs> well, that almost happens. Oh, Christ. Just remember, folks, directly after this, Sonic gets impaled by a Mephilus beam. Yes. Nice smile. And this cutscene explains why. You no longer have four rings after this cutscene. So why would anybody want to finish this game if they already gave me a happy ending for completing the Sonic campaign? Well, here's the thing. Sonic's campaign is the least important out of the, the three campaigns. The least important? Yeah. Eggman's not the final boss in this game. Not even close. No, it's fucking Super Nephilus, whatever. Yeah, Solaris. Super Solaris plot-infused Nephilus thingy. Yes. This is a nice little track to end the game on. Yes, but it's also incredibly J-pop and romantic. Yes. Not something that I would associate uh, Sonic with. J-pop, certainly, but not romantic. Romance. Also, there's a goddamn clap track in it. Why is there a goddamn clap track? Because this is like pseudo R and B J pop. R and B and J pop do not need to be mixed together in the same genre. I don't know. I mean, I think it. I think it's pretty nice. Yes, it's a pretty nice track. But at the same point, it it kind of spoils the fact that these two are supposed to be love interests. Which is which is preposterous in itself. Yeah. Who are they appealing to with this bullshit? <laughs> very, no, very few people slash no one. No one is actually happy about this confirmed relationship. Well, I mean, didn't they retcon like this whole game? Uh, with the ending of this game, yes. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that. They, they wrote themselves an escape route. <laughs> yes, which was honestly, I think. I think the community would have been uh, more on fire at the time, but would have accepted it, uh, especially with the concept of Sonic Generations, if they had actually stuck with their guns and said, yes, this actually happened. You see all these people whose names we're reading? Laugh at all these people. Point at the screen. Point at the screen and laugh at them. <laughs> you were You all worked on a terrible fucking game. <laughs> Um, no, I, I, I digress. It is unfortunate how this game came out. I know that none of the people on this list, you know, they everybody everybody who worked on this game wanted this game to be everything that it could have been. It just said that, that it didn't happen. Witchcraft? Ooh. Oh, that's, Maybe that's why the game faltered. Because they broke the deal with the devil. <laughs> well, yeah, Mephistopheles. 
<laughs> oh yeah, that's that's what Mephilus is short for. Yes, and Iblis is you know a jinn in a jinn in Arabic de uh, demonology. So, is in a wait. What's a, what's a jinn? Oh, um, they're more commonly referred to by children's media as genies because jinn is much more difficult for children to pronounce. Ah. Uh. At least I think so. So if I had three wishes, I would wish for A, uh, a better game, C, I mean two, about four hours of my life back, and three, of this, a better game. So Sonic Generations and Sonic Colors. Uh, you know, I actually... I, only, I a while ago, probably like 2010, 2011, I watched somebody play Sonic Generations. I saw the 2D. I'm like, you know what? This is really cool. Bring back Sonic 2D because that's what I grew up with. My, I did grow up with some Sonic 3D. I mean, I played Sonic Adventure 2 Battle. I played Sonic Adventure DX, the director's cut. The only Sonic that I actually ever grew up with was Sonic Heroes, and I think it was Sonic 2. And I only managed to play Sonic 2 at a babysitter's place. Hmm. I had, I had Sonic 2 at my cousin's house. I still really like Sonic Heroes. I will admit that uh, it doesn't actually hold up, but I like playing Sonic Heroes. It's one of those games that I keep wanting to go back and uh, grab the uh, adult... Uh, on my Dolphin MU, but I don't actually have my Dolphin MU up and running yet. Oh look, it's a horrible Knuckles rep in the Sonic portion. I love these, I love the Knuckles reps. <laughs> hey, Pumpkin Hill is my jam, yo. I dropped the beast of that shit, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, Sonic the Hedgehog remains one of my favorite IPs of all time. It's a very pleasant universe. It, it makes it's the kind of game that makes me smile every time I every time I see, you know, somebody playing it or I see just content from the game. I wanted to have I wanted to enjoy this game even going through it. But the most of the satisfaction I got from finishing this game was just that, finishing this goddamn game. <laughs> and I could walk away saying, yeah, I played Sonic 06. Mm, well, I, the first third of it. I played Sonic 06. It's a shame that we're not going to get a comment on Shadow and Silver story. Uh, I'm not going to force you to go through those, mind you, because Shadow's gameplay is much worse than Sonic's, and Silver's is actually worse than that. Although I will say that Sh uh, so uh, Shadow and Silver's story are actually worthwhile. I know that ev I know that almost everyone hates everything about this game, but I actually like Silver and Shadow's story. I can't remember if I can't remember if like off off recording I went back to the Silver campaign and I started playing as Blaze. I think I remember that everything that everybody says about Blaze is true. She's she has the best controls of any character. Yeah, Blaze is awesome in this game and. Honestly, if you could play the entire game as Blaze, the game would be slightly better for it. Oh, the, the game would be outstanding if you had Blaze's controls throughout the entire thing. Because she, she I don't she, think she the game would actually be that much better with just, with just Blaze. She has very fluid controls. Yes, she does. But it's not exactly the controls that are that are always the problem. There's a lot of level design quirks that just don't work for the for uh, Son for Sonic and his friends. For example, a lot, a lot of sto a lot of the uh, elements for Shadow and Silver story are very heavy combat based. Silver's not a combat character; he really isn't. Shadow certainly is, but it gets very tedious very quickly. Yeah. yeah for, for those of you listening at home, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying go to somebody else's commentary channel to find Sonic 06 content on Shadow and Silver, but. You're going to have to go to somebody else's commentary channel to get that content. I recommend uh, BSC's, uh, BSC's playthrough, honestly. BS Clement's there. He is cool. Yeah. I don't actually watch Clement's videos anymore, though. Watch watch a commentary done by somebody who actually enjoys Sonic the Hedgehog. I mean, Game Grumps, Game Grumps did, did, you know, about as good as they could do. 
I, I can't get past how Aaron just shits on Sonic, like, 99% of the time, though. But yeah, we have reached the end of the carriage in Sonic 06. Sega! Alright, everyone, be safe, and next we'll be continuing on with Oracle of Seasons. Huzzah!